The governor of Oshun State, Raul Faragbeshola, has been sworn in for a second term under the All Progressive Congress. At the inauguration ceremony in Oshobo, the Oshun State capital, some top leaders of the party, including APC presidential aspirant Muhammadu Buhari, commended the development efforts in the state and urged him to continue the good work. Governor Aregba Shola, on his part, promised to remain committed to the people. The Oshogbo City Stadium is filled to the brim as citizens of the state converge to witness the swearing-in of Ralph Aregba Shola as governor for a second term in office. The governor has the full support of his party, the APC, as party leaders and governors from the APC-controlled states are here to witness the event. And in line with the protocol at events like this, the deputy governor of the state, Mrs. Grace Lawyer Tomori, is the first to take the oath of office. I, Iyafi Grace, Titi Lawyer Tomori, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that stand up, stand up, stand up, for champions, for champions, stand up. The moment comes eventually as the chief judge of Russian state, Justice Uyibola Adipele Ujo, administers the oath of office on the governor. I, Obeni Abdurraouf, Adesoji Arakbeshala, do solemnly affirm, do solemnly affirm, that I will be faithful, that I will be faithful, and bear true allegiance, and bear true allegiance, to the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to the Federal Republic of Nigeria. With the inauguration over, Governor Arakbeshala, the last party members take to the stage with tributes for the sworn in chief executive. Thank you, Rauf Arepeshola Ogbeni, the new governor of Osu. The revolution is about relief for the elderly, the welfare program that creates local economy. Today, everybody is happy with Osu State because you have made your choice. You have made a choice for good governance. Governor Rebbe Shada rounds up with his inaugural speech after being sworn in for a second term. He says that he is determined to improve the lot of his people. Our vision is to deliver 20 years development in the next four years in economic, social and political fields. It's a major task, but with your support, we can do it. As he rolls up his sleeves and goes back to work, the people of Oshun State will now be hoping that Governor Ralph Aregbeshala will surmount the various challenges facing not just his state, but the nation, and deliver to his people as promised. We'll move on to health issues, and the World Health Organization says the death toll from the Ebola virus disease is now 5,500 and counting, and public health experts say all hands must be on deck to stop the spread. In view of this, the Voice of America recently hosted a town hall meeting in Washington to engage its African audience about the problem. Our correspondent, Eni Thompson, reports from Washington, D.C. In a special edition of Voice America's weekly program, Straight Talk Africa, host Shaka Sali and his producers brought together a studio audience of African experts and media with a panel of people on the front lines in the fight against Ebola. Sierra Leone Ambassador to the United States, Bakari Stevens, Ebola co-discoverer, Dr. Malunga Miatudila, and two survivors, Dr. Rick Sacra and photojournalist Ashoka Muku. First, Mayor Director David Anso said that Ebola is more than just a news story, it's a commitment to coverage. VOA has been reporting on this story, and I can tell you now we will stay with it for as long as necessary. Even if, it's, even if other major media move on to other stories. Delving to the crux of the matter, Dr. Malunga said this outbreak is the 26th since the virus was discovered in 1976. It says none have lasted for more than three months, unlike the current one. He cited a number of factors behind his thoughts. It's because we, the human beings, are going into the habitat of the bats, <coughs> we're entering the, 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 the new uh, niches. So this is why we are, we are meeting new 
friends or enemies or uh, so that is a problem. Sierra Leone's ambassador told the audience he appreciates every assistance, especially from the international community, but he asks that attention also be given to children who have lost their parents to Ebola. Because many of these orphans do not have uh, the kind of support that we might need, and the government that is coming from this type of catastrophe will be engaged in many facets of the nation's uh, uh, bringing it back to where uh, from the bank. Nigeria's success in stopping Ebola could not be left out. In response to my question, Dr. Wisekra, who caught Ebola in Liberia, said Nigeria did all of the right things. Nigeria has done extremely well with universities, training centers, residency programs. You have a very well-educated medical workforce, and so you have people who are equipped to recognize this disease, to follow proper procedures and isolating it quickly. And the town hall was not without emotions, especially when Ebola survivor Ashikamupo made his plea to the audience. I think you know, everybody gets to choose what they care about in life and what's important to them. And for me, I think people who have privilege, people who have opportunity, it's a good thing to give back if you can. And you have to use your intelligence so it's not just wanting to go, but trying to see what you can actually accomplish to help people who are doing hard work and, I don't know, I just feel like it's a beautiful world, but we can make it better. Amy Thompson reporting for Channels Television, Washington, D.C. The Lagos State Government today hosted the 8th Town Hall meeting with the theme, Maintain Our Collective Resolve in Fighting Crime. The event, which took place at the City Hall, Lagos, had in attendance security chiefs, government officials, and other concerned citizens. The State Governor, Babatunde Fashola, told the gathering that real development can only be achieved in a crime-free state. From 37 rifles, from daily bank robberies, we build capacity, acquire thousands of rifles, millions of rounds of bullets, armored personnel carriers, patrol boats, helicopters for surveillance, and so on and so forth. But what does that mean also? Just by putting on street lights, making surveys in places like Shomolu, Bariga, Yanofaja, the results were truly outstanding. People who fried Bingo Akara Yam, people who sold daily merchandise, their income improved by up to 40, 50 percent in some instances because they could trade beyond 6 p.m. right into the heart of midnight, some overnight. This is the impact of what we have put together as a family. We are not many. But we are met here every year and impacted people we don't even know in a way that has been most defining. Away from security now, and for people living with disabilities in the Niger Delta, help seems to be on the way as the Niger Delta Development Commission has pledged to assist them. The group, under the auspices of the Niger Delta Coalition of Persons with Disabilities, visited the headquarters of the NDDC in Port Harcourt, the River State Capital, where they met with the managing director of the commission, Basi Dan Abia. Mr. Dan Abia promised to make adequate provision for the physically challenged in the region. So I think those things are behind us. We should be able to start in mind and future. Where would you go from here? Right now we have a specialized program for people with disabilities. And we will make sure that whatever environment program we are doing, a certain percentage of that program will be set aside from people with disabilities.
Mr. Erasmus Oyeshi is two billion naira richer as he emerges winner of the seventh edition of the National Arts Competition in Lagos, sponsored by Nigerian breweries. The grand finale, which had 12 contestants vying for the top spot, attracted art enthusiasts from all works of life. The director of the African Artists Foundation and organizers of the contest applaud the quality of work displayed by the contestants based on the theme, Intervention. Art enthusiasts get together for the grand finale of the 7th National Arts Competition. Twelve finalists made it this far, and here they display the works of their hands based on this year's same intervention. The last three standing will be rewarded with cash prizes, cuts in Nigerian beers, the proud sponsors of the event. The judges had a real difficulty in deciding the winner and uh, I have to say when you look around this is absolutely great uh, contemporary artwork and we're very proud to be a sponsor of this, uh, of this event. As tension builds, the stage is graced by some delightful performances. And the team of assessors led by Professor L. Anansu seems to have completed their assignment. It's now time for the big reveal. He wins this year's competition and now he expresses his delight. 2013 edition of the national competition, I was there and I uh, participated as one of the 12 finalists. So after that, I was interviewed by Channel's Television, I remember, and I said, and I'm going to re-energize myself, you understand, and uh, re-engineer my you know, tactics to uh, do better, and that I did. A member of the organizing committee speaks on this year's competition. The artists pushed themselves. They realized that the competition is really stiff, and I think the retreat that we organized with the artists is really important in nurturing these artists and guiding them in the artistic practice. The National Arts Competition, a brainchild of the African Artist Foundation, makes a return for the 8th edition next year. And we look forward to more eye-catching presentations. Chris Elems, Channels Television News. When the news at 10 returns, the International Monetary Fund hails Nigeria's monetary policy tightening as complementary. Well, that's on business news. So join us again.